Hello and welcome to another recitation session. In the last class, we ran a simple tra tree travel so program of traveling from one state to another. And hopefully, you could do the relationship program also that was given as a homework or for you to do. Today, let's see how to read inputs and write using the log statements and also understand how rules work better. So the first, let's try to do a simple program that writes a symbol, takes in a symbol and outputs a symbol. To output something, a string, we can use the function write. Write x implies that x is a term and it outputs this term into the console, write can be x. A term can be a string, an integer, a character. So let's see how this line is written. When you call draw symbol, write three stars slash n, puts three stars and a new line character. NL is the symbol for new line in prolog. And again, another three stars. You can also use other statements such as print, put, put care, which are also provided in Prolog. To know more, you can use the link here to see the details or refer to the Prolog manual. What if you want to print a symbol or a string multiple times, like in the case where we ask for three stars? The program would look something like this, where you say draw symbol, symbol, comma n and as long as n is greater than zero you're writing the symbol and calling draw symbol again with n minus one this should remind you that it is a recursive call automatically remember that every recursive call should have a written or a break statement so draw symbol symbol comma zero becomes your base case or your return statement. When you execute draw symbol plus comma five, the output would give five pluses true and say and yes. When you see the output yes, it means your program has executed successfully. In case it does not execute successfully, you would see a no. So the program would run this way. First, it would call draw symbol with five and output a plus. And then it would do a five minus one, which will lead to a four and you get your second plus. Then it again calls it with three, two, one, and then it is a zero. When it reaches a zero, it executes a blank statement, draw symbol comma zero, which does nothing and says yes and ends the program. Remember, that the base case is very, very important for you to terminate the program. Let's see how read works. Read or input from the screen can be taken by using read x, where x is a term. Remember, a string has to be provided in single quotes. For example, string hello is a term and every input must end with a dot. So if you use write x followed by read x followed by write x, whatever is your input value, that would get outputted onto the screen. Other functions such as read care, read integer are also available to read, uh, to, which you can use as functions for taking input from the screen, from your system. So now let's try to include, combine these two programs where you read a symbol and a number and execute it to see an output. So here is the same code which is on the screen. Let's try to execute this using prolog, gprolog. So let me start gprolog for you. And go to file, consult. 
I'm going to the directory. Um, program is called draw symbol. So you see it compiles and say, say yes. Now I say main, enter. It asks me, enter a symbol. Remember here that a string has to be provided in double quotes and every input must end with a dot. Enter a number. So let me say 25. Since I forgot to put the dot, it's still waiting for me. All I need to do is put a dot and press enter. And that's it. The program executes with printing 25 plus symbols for us. Let's learn another concept of lists in Prolog. A list, like in any other language, is a set of terms put together in square brackets. If you have only square brackets, then it's an empty list. In Prolog, a list is read as a term followed by a list. So it's seen as a head with a tail. Head, head with a tail, the head is a, a term, while the tail is the remaining list. So if you see this simple program, write P, which takes in a list, H, type T. Remember, H is a term, and T is the remaining list. And if you give A, B, C, of x comma y, the term a is provided into the variable x and the remaining part of the list is put into y and the output would be this. If you give a single element in your list, then x would take the element and y would be an empty list. If you give an empty list, there is no input that can be provided into x and so it exits with a no. Write this program, see various inputs for H and T and see where it runs and where it fails. What about a string? If you give a string as an input, how would it read a string? Well, that's for today. And for you to do, write a simple program that takes in your name, your course, and an ID and outputs something like this. Your name is Bill is a CSE student taking CSE 259. This is a simple program for you to run and learn more about Prolog. From the next class, we will learn to write our first project. Thank you.